Let's bring in GOP Congressman Jason Smith, the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Uh, chairman, thanks so much for joining the program. Uh, I want to start a little bit on, on this deal that was going on uh, and the fact that someone called uh, the court um, to and the judges assuming that this was the counsel for Hunter Biden. And I think they were representing someone that was in your office. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, absolutely. On Tuesday morning, I had my lawyer file an amicus brief. And the amicus brief was the 15 hours worth of testimony that the two IRS whistleblowers did before my committee, the Ways and Means Committee, because we wanted the judge to have all the information and the allegations that these IRS whistleblowers had. Within an hour, my lawyer saw that it was taken off of the public docket. He called the court, and what did he find out? The Apparently, an individual from Hunter Biden's law firm in New York called and pretended to be a paralegal for my lawyer mm. and said that it needed to be taken down immediately because it had private um, personal information by mistake. Well, the judge then looked into it found out by using, you know, common technology of caller ID and saw that it came to that law firm, told Hunter Biden's lawyers that they had until nine o'clock Tuesday night to um, to address those claims or face sanctions. They ultimately said that it must be a miscommunication. Um, they would never misrepresent to the court. But this kind of conduct is so typical. These same lawyers, these same lawyers, according to the whistleblower's testimony, said before a group of DOJ prosecutors that that if they brought charges against the president's son, they'd be facing career suicide. Unbelievable. It's it sounds crazy. Of course, they say it was a miscommunication and whatever. It got all screwed up. And that brought us to yesterday when were you shocked, uh, chairman, that two of the provisions in these in this sweetheart deal uh, essentially protected Hunter Biden forever uh, regarding any future prosecution if a Republican were elected president. It would make sure that he was never brought up, uh, his attorneys believed, on charges related to his foreign lobby. I wasn't shocked. It just proved what the whistleblower's evidence provided is that this plea agreement was a sweetheart deal of Hunter Biden. And I'm glad that the judge refused it yesterday. It, so, it shows that no person's above the law, even if their last name's Biden. What did you think about um, House Speaker McCarthy talking about this impeachment inquiry? He says, let's inquire, let's get the information and then determine if there's if there's room for an impeachment. It's exactly what we've said all along is that we're going to follow the facts. That's, in fact, what we've been doing in the House Ways and Means Committee. The Oversight and Judiciary Committee are doing the same thing. There's so many onions to this layer. And every time you peel off, peel off one layer, it continues to get closer to President Biden. We got a lot of information to um, continue to look at. There's several individuals that need to come before our three committees. We've asked for 13. However, the president's administration is blocking that, and we're going to have to find a way to get him in so we can get some answers to questions that we have. Yeah. Uh, Chairman, I, I know the day before the judge uh, was going to rule on this sweetheart deal, uh, and it was a sweetheart deal when you look at it, uh, you sent over a 400-page transcript of what the whistleblower said last week uh, before Ways and Means. Do you think that had any impact on her looking at uh, what they had hammered out and going, now, wait a minute, why don't I see anything regarding that in this? I would hope to think so. The reason why we wanted her to have it is to have the full full truth and the full perspective. What those IRS whistleblowers highlighted in their sworn testimony before Congress and also before our committee are very disturbing. It pointed out how the <clears throat> Department of Justice delayed their investigation to Hunter Biden to such a degree that the, the felony tax crimes of 2014 and 2015 the statute of limitations ran. They also showed numerous provisions where they divulged information to Hunter Biden's lawyers. Mm -hmm. It's quite alarming. She needed to have all this information. So, Chairman, I, I want to pivot a little bit to Hunter Biden's business partner, Devin Archer. Uh, apparently, we're getting reports that he's in hiding right now. He and his family have been getting death threats and any fears about his safety. Um, I know he's supposed to testify before Congress. Have you heard anything about this? And, and what are you guys doing to secure that testimony? 
I can tell you it's very concerning. I've just seen how uh, Hunter Biden's lawyers have tried to discredit the two IRS whistleblowers in my committee. Um, the 10 page letter that I received from Hunter Biden's lawyers trying to intimidate my investigation. I, I can understand why this witness is concerned because we've been experiencing it just as chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. They are reaching to all lows into trying to stop this investigation. What is Hunter's relationship with Devin Archer now? And at one point they were described as not only business partners, but best friends. Do they get along now? Is Devin, what, what can we expect when he testifies on Monday? You know, Ainsley, I don't know the answer to that. He's yeah. testifying before the Oversight <laughs> Committee on Monday, and I don't know the relationship. I, I, I don't know how they're working, but um, I'm looking forward to his answers to some questions that Congressman Comer is going to be okay. asking. That's yeah. Devin on the left right there. You know, uh, Chairman, <clears throat> everybody thought that this was going to be a done deal regarding uh, the plea deal yesterday. You got to figure that if you are working to reelect Joe Biden as president in 2024, uh, you saw the headline and you go, oh, crap. Steve, they have to be very concerned. Um, Democrats have to be concerned about their 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 nominee for president as President Biden, because this all stinks to high heaven, what we're uncovering. And they can't be OK with that. No American can be OK with this. All right. Congressman, Chairman, Jason Smith. Thank sir. you. Thanks, sir. Thank you all. Good morning.